Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to discuss neural networks, and this is just going to be a brief introduction, and then in later videos, we'll actually learn how to calculate these. The basic versions aren't very complicated, but let's dive on in. So a neural network is a nonlinear model, and it's just a way to take inputs and generate some output. And so the simplest form is just a logistic model, and what do I mean by that is that when you have a neural network, um, you have input layer, and you have an output layer, and typically you see something at an input layer and an output layer such that you have, so let's say three inputs, we'll call this X1, X2, and X3, and then you'll have some output on this side. Uh, there's also an activation function, and an activation function just converts um, the inputs to a nonlinear function. Um, typically we use the sigmoid transformation which is the same as logistic. And if you had no hidden layers, so these just went into here, so the inputs went to the outputs, this is just a logistic model. So since we're using the activation function of logistic, there are no hidden layers, we end up with a plain logistic model. Now that being said, let's just look at a basic neural network. So again, you have your inputs, and let's say again you have three inputs, which are X1, X2, and X3, um, you typically have your hidden layers. And these could be anywhere from, I mean, as many neurons as you want. So in this example, we have an input layer here. We have hidden layers, which we have two of them in this example. And then you'll have your output layer. And the key behind a neural network is that everything is connected. So in this example, you. X1 would be connected to your neuron one and your layer one, and then it X1 would be connected to neuron two, neuron three, neuron four, and then you go to your X2, and again, these would all be connected all the way down for all of your Xs and all of your neurons in each layer. And then you would continue on to do this and you'd end up with another layer and you'd have more connections. And then finally you would take these hidden layers and these would all feed in to your output layer. So this is typically called um, forward feed um, neural network. If you have, I think, three hidden layers, so if you have three or more uh, hidden layers, these are also called MLP, which is multiple layer percept. Tron. We're gonna focus more or less on this forward feed kind of format, and we're gonna talk about the two pieces of the forward feed. We're gonna ignore all the other types of neural networks. So yes, there are plenty of types of neural networks. There are convoluted networks. There are all kinds of different ones. There's like short, long-term uh, neural networks, and so we can cover those as well, maybe in a future video. But let's just see kind of how this forward backward works before we actually dive into another video on the math. So again, in this network here, let's just say we have three on your input, you have two, which is your hidden, and you have one, which is your output. The simple thing to know is that there's essentially two steps, at least in my mind. You have what you call forward propagation, and you also have back propagation, or backward propagation. So forward propagation is quite simple. All you're really doing here is you have your X1, X2, X3. Um, you end up trying to get this output and what you do, which we'll go into this more depth in another video, essentially you take um, all of your weights. So each one of these is going to be a weighted number. And you end up with some equation where, for example, you would have your X1 value times the first weight, and then you'd sum all these up. So you'd sum up, you know, to get this value here, we'll call this neural one. We'll end up doing X1 plus W1, and then we'll do X2 times W2, which would be the weight to here, and then you'd add up X3 times W3, and this would give you your neural one. And then you have to do this and you transform this. So you have to choose what they call an activation function. And most commonly, at least what I've seen, is the sigmoid, which is equivalent to logistic. But you can also use other different types of transformation functions. So now you take your N1, your neuron one, and you transform this. So you take the logistic of N1, 
and this would be one over one plus the exponent of negative, and we'll call this n1 again, this is what we were actually doing. And this will give you your, more or less your transformed one, and that will be the value that will go into here. And you'll do the same thing for your second one, and then again, you'll do the exact same calculation. You'll take your transform n1 and your transform n2, you'll multiply them by weights, and then you'll do a sigmoid transformation again, so you'll do this equation again, and then you'll end up with some value here, which is your output. In all of this simple mathematics, this is the forward propagation. So this is super, super simple. So when you have a final model and you wanna validate and make sure you did it correctly, um, you can just write out this equation, which we can see later when they get complicated. You can use matrices to simplify the math, but you can actually just multiply all these weights, all these x's, do the transformations, and then you'll get some value, which will be your output and whatever this value is, that'll be for that one observation. So now the magic behind neural networks, you're like, okay, I get this, you're just adding up weights and multiplying them times something. Forward propagation isn't fancy, but the question is how do these networks learn? So with forward feed or multi-layer perceptron, the second step is the back propagation. And essentially what this is doing is you have your inputs and you do your forward propagation and what ends up happening is you get some output. We'll say this is our model output and we have an actual output as well. And so you wanna figure out what the error is here. And there are different ways to do this, but you have what they call um, an error function or many other people call these cost functions. And it can be as simple as doing like categorization, which would just be your actual value minus your model's output, and then here you'll get some error or some cost. Uh, another one that's popular is the mean squared error, or in general, just the squared error here. So again, you would just take, if you had your squared error, uh, this would just equal your actual minus your model's output and then you would just square these and then you can take an average. But at the end of the day here, you get some error. And so when you just pick random weights to do the forward propagation, you're gonna get some error. And since you randomly pick the weights, it'll be a massive error and this model is not a good model. And so the key here is that you do back propagation. So what back propagation is, is it looks at the all the input values and it finds this multi-dimensional space. And so if you had, for example, um, this is like 2D here, you might have something that looks like this, and this we'll call this the, the error function. Let's so say you randomly select the weights and you end up here. What you wanna do is you wanna adjust all the weights inside of this neural network here. So when you saw this and we had the weights, you wanna adjust these weights and you wanna minimize your cost function or minimize your error function so that the errors become as small as possible. So your model is actually predicting the actual values. When you use gradient descent, which is a fancy word if you haven't done a lot of linear algebra, um, it's a way of finding which direction you should move this dot. So in this case, we'd like to move it here and we'd like to find the minimum. Um, one of the issues that a lot of people don't really bring up a lot is that finding this minimum is difficult. You might get stuck here and think this is the minimum because that's the local minimum. Um, again, depending where you start your weights, you could start here and you might end up coming down and end up here as a final one, or you could start here and come down and end up here as a final one. So it's important when you do these is to run multiple models and to generate random numbers for the weights when you start the model because you could end up at different local minimums depending where you started. And there's also a learning rate, which we'll talk about later in the math portion, but the learning rate helps you somewhat skip over. So in this case, if you started here, you would hopefully skip over this local minimum and land like somewhere here. And then hopefully you would end up at the bottom as this is probably a better local minimum than this value over here. But the general idea here is to minimize your errors. And when you do this, you end up adjusting all of your weights until you get to the minimum. So something else I didn't really mention in the other calculations is that there's something called weights and there's something called biases. Uh, your weights are just multiplied by your values, so like your x1, your x2, your x3, when we had the example, and they calculate out the next layer of the forward network here. But the biases are the exact same thing as like a linear model when you have an intercept term. So when you move forward in the other example, like we had x1, w1 plus, you know, x2, 
uh, W2 plus all that, you end up with say X of N, W of N, and then you would add on your bias. So we'll just call this bias one or bias N. So the biases just shift the curves left and right to get the best fit. But when you do this back propagation, the whole goal here is trying to find the minimum value by adjusting both your weights and your biases. And once you do this, you can get an optimal model. And so what you end up doing essentially with this model too, just to make it a little more clear, is if you started at this dot, you would move down a little bit and you'd start here and then you'd forward propagate again, you would measure the error and then you'd look and say, okay, the gradient says we need to keep moving to the left and you'd keep moving until you hit some minimum. So in this case, let's say we hit this one as the minimum and that's where we would stop. And then you could actually calculate the errors and check the model. Again, it is important to reset your weights randomly, run this multiple times, because um, sometimes you might hit a better minimum. For example, this one might be a better one than this other one that we hit earlier. Okay, now just to quickly wrap this up, I just wanted to make this a quick video. Um, everything might not make sense mathematically, but I'm hoping you guys are getting the general intuition. Uh, step one is that you set these random weights and then you do your forward propagation. And then the second part is that you look at the errors and then you do your backward propagation. And after you do step two, then you just repeat this. So then you'd go back to step one, uh, you do your forward propagation, you calculate out your error. And then once you have your error, your error looks large and you wanna get some value say less than 1%. And then you'd go back and do back propagation again and you would optimize your weights and your biases and then you would do forward propagation with those weights and biases, check the error again, and you'd keep looping back and around until you get more or less the optimal value that you want. But the general principle here, I hope you guys take away is that there's forward propagation and back propagation, and these are two terms that you need to understand to really build a forward feed network. Anyways, I hope you like this video. If you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and as always, until next time.